All right. But you know what is interesting? What's that? Reviews. Oh, yeah. Let's let's do it. Let's get some All reviews right. going. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, we got some. We got we got some pictures of some cards up here. These look, these, these yeah. what? These don't look this like Munchkin cards, right? Right. So this is uh, this is Munchkin Critical Role, which came out recently from uh, Steve Jackson Games. Uh, we got a copy from the Op, which is fantastic. Um, I I don't know about you. I've been playing Munchkin since uh, I don't know forever. It feels like, <laughs> and uh, and it's a game that is. All about kicking down the door, beating up monsters, getting treasure, met, and uh, and also stabbing your friends in the back. That's Munchkin. Yeah, um, yeah, that's Munchkin. And so I was very excited to actually take a look at a version of Munchkin which focuses on a group, the Critical Role team, which is not about stabbing each other in the back, right? It's it's uh, totally about cooperation and you know the very D and D ness of of getting out there. Like Munchkin feels like Hackmaster, Critical Role. It's a different story. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so I really enjoyed taking a, a quick look at this game. It is different if you played Munchkin in the past. Uh, I, I've both played and taught many, many students because uh, the, the kids I know love playing Munchkin. It's just a ton of fun. Um, gain levels. Once you get up to level 10, uh, you win. Um, that's it. And so you try to keep your friends from getting there first while you get there by, by through your cards, through your items that you were gathering, through the classes that you were taking. Um, and all the classic Munchkin stuff is in here. Um, Although the cards are totally different, all featuring art and uh, and names that resemble the the folks that you know from Critical Role. Um, there's quotes both from the actors and the characters that they've played in the the Mighty Nine series, um, which is pretty dang cool. Um, that is cool. Uh, so I keep looking at the cards over here, but I know our time isn't synced up perfectly. But gosh, I like them. Um, d d fans are going to find a lot of the cards in here that you recognize. Instead of seeing things that are kind of like, you know, from the original game that are like a little too ridiculous to be d d you're going to see periaps of wound closure. You're going to talk about Hexblade curses. You're going to see the things that you recognize from d d um, because that's what's going on here. And you'll also see a lot of the characters um, and enemies from the Critical Role campaign, which is really fun. Nice. Um, but th that's the expected, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the differences. I know one yeah. of these pictures has a d20 in it it does there's an optional an optional rule in this version of um of munchkin which i recommend you use honestly which is after you've figured everything out right you've added all your your bonuses together um to see how strong that monster is and you oh gosh you're you're down by two right it's like 18 versus 20 or something like that um you can have both sides roll a d20 and add that in as well like adding that huge amount of D, &D randomness to the game which uh is number one kind of fun but also in a different way it makes the game nicer right if i got an 18 total and you added a 20 to that monster because you like added a it's uh i don't know you cloned it and you made it super strong or whatever else right then you're yeah. the jerk who stopped me from getting a level and killed me and i hate that but in this game you can like help out but it actually comes down to the d20 i mean you're not getting up to like it, it's enough to swing every single encounter, which is kind of fun. So it leaves it a little bit more up to fate, whether you win or lose, whether your character lives or dies, or you have to run away, um, which I think is very fun. Yeah. Um, other differences in here, there are guest stars, because, of course, critical role. Um, you can have one guest star in your party at any time. And uh, anytime you want to run away from a combat, right? It's going bad. Oh, I'm not going to win. I got to get out of here. Um, you can you can sacrifice your guest star and immediately escape. Um, well, I mean, they're not coming back for the next episode, so exactly. don't need it. They're, exactly. Yeah. We, don't, we don't need it. Um, so I think that's fun because that's penalty is often enormous. Of course, you have to find a guest star, but that's possible. Um, the other rule that they added in here is that the, it's no longer a race to level 10. Level 10 is one of the requirements that you need to meet in order to win the game. But the other one is that there are five boss monsters in the deck and the game oh. cannot end until three of them have been defeated. Oh, very so nice. you are potentially gathering them, keeping them in your hand so that you can play one, you know, for your final victory. But but no longer is the game about 
I have a first level monster in my hand. And once I'm like super powerful and level nine and my attack bonus is plus 50, I'm going to beat up this level one piece of toast. Um, now it's, it's really like I got to beat a boss in order to win this game. Um, nice. And so now the fight is like much more epic. I mean, there's still like the help other people, the the stealing items, you know, stealing levels from people. There's all the shenanigans that you expect from Munchkin. But this game has kind of gone out of its way to make it a little less about being combative, even though it still is that combative Munchkin game. Um, yeah. And so so as I look at this, as I as I was taking a look and, and messing around with the cards, I, I felt like. I wish this is the game that I had to teach my students uh, how to play Munchkin because it does have those bits of like, I'm not helping you for just my benefit, but I'm helping you because, well, that's one of the bosses down. Perfect. Okay. We're going to a little bit farther. Right. Or, um, you know, finding these <laughs> weird kind of treasures and, and making sure that they go to the characters that they kind of match. Like I would be in here. And if I was playing, um, I mean, there's full Kate, excuse me, full character art for everybody. But if I was playing Jesper and, uh, oh my gosh, uh, and I wanted the items that matched Jester, excuse me, um, wouldn't I like go track those down? Like, wouldn't yeah. I be happier if I found them? Like if they're here in the pile, okay, well, I'm a mage, but also uh, I'm playing, I'm playing Caleb. So I want that staff because that goes with me a little bit better. Like it feels like the fandom is in here uh, in a really, really nice way without being like totally overpowering. Nice. So... Awesome. I'm here to tell you that uh, that I like this game of Munchkin, and uh, I, I recommend that you check it out, actually. If Munchkin is a game that is, I mean, if you haven't played it already, you should play Munchkin. Everybody should play Munchkin at least once. Everybody should play um, Munchkin. Yeah, and this is a great version of it to play. Of the many Munchkins, I recommend Munchkin Critical Role. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, ooh, hey, 54 Aqua Snakes. Uh, I hope you don't have those all in one bucket. Uh, thanks for <laughs> subbing for 37 months. Man, 37 months. Perfect. We had a 40 months not too long ago. Whew. People have been around for a this while. It's great. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, yeah. No, this game looks great. This is I I I got burnt out on Munchkin. Um yeah. but this is a version that I'd be interested in playing. Um yeah. It was I, I'm with you, right? It was it was hard mm -hmm. to play Munchkin once upon a time. You had those bad games and you don't want to play it anymore. Yeah. Seeing like my students start playing it again was really interesting because it was like what do they like about it oh they love the the fighting and the infighting and the cool stuff and i get a i've, I've got a, this huge set of armor great um you know and it's an easy way to have that experience and this is a good version of it so nice nice well yeah uh so Let's you recommend this art. game look this looks great art. it's beautiful <laughs> all right so uh i have a game to review what should we check what? that out i'm ready i'm prepared all right all right, so so we're gonna have to travel through the multiverse, and get to the other side of of the multiverse into the dark multiverse, to talk about this next game. And this is the uh, DC deck building. Uh, <laughs> whoops! Jeez. I, I I hit a weird button. Sorry. This <laughs> That's is a gruesome a, this, picture. Perfect, isn't it? It's so good. <laughs> So uh, this is the D I'm going to be talking about the DC deck building game. Uh, this is a new game from. Uh, ooh, why are, why are things disappearing on me? There we go. Uh, DC deck building Metal Knights or Dark Knights Metal. This is based off the Dark Knights Metal series from DC. Um, oh, I guess I only have two pictures. That's fine. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to take pictures because I really did finish this game up right before <laughs> we started <laughs> streaming. Uh, so. Take a step back. I love DC deck building. This is one of my favorite series of games. I love the, the deck I building. I love this ver this version of deck building. Um, I like it better than like your Dominions or any of those types of games as well. But that's just because I like how fast it is. I like the flow of it. I like the theme. I'm a big fan of DC Universe and all DC comics. In fact, mm -hmm. I just finished reading Dark Knight's Metal probably last week. So it was all very fresh in my mind as I was playing oh, this nice. game. Um, for those who are um, uninitiated into this game, the typical setup for this game is you have a one big stack of cards. That's kind of your your the, the, the entire library, right? And then you put uh, five of them out in a row, and those are the ones that you can buy from. And then there's usually a stack of villains, and those are the bad guys that you all have to fight. Uh, and then there's a stack of what's called kicks uh, and uh, weaknesses. Your hand starts like most deck building games. You have a way of building up currency as well as ways of, of, of you know, 
messing with the other players. So you buy these cards, you slowly build up, and then you knock out the super villain. You put super villain in your deck, and that becomes a really powerful card you have. So that's the normal game of DC deck building. Right. And you usually one of the really cool things is they you you get to pick a hero, and that hero is you. That's who you represent, and your hero has special powers. So say you're playing the Flash in the original one, and anytime you play a card that says or that says draw a card you draw an extra card right so that's the flash represents his flash powers mm -hmm. different powers different things so in this game you you pick a hero uh but you start the game with the batman who laughs uh has captured batman so batman is a character that you cannot start with right as you're okay. going through the game uh, you no longer have kicks. You have another uh, power. I don't remember what's called off the top of my head. I should have brought the game box with me, but it it works <laughs> similarly to a kick. But it's to represent that you're going back and forth between the multiverses, um, and it's a competitive game. It's very fast paced. Uh, as you kill villains, you then will uh, rescue heroes. So then you pull one from the stack of heroes and then you put it under the Batman who laughs. So now you have Batman and maybe oh. another one, right? So okay. now there's two there or maybe more. Um, and then there's ways that you can swap your hero out for one of the heroes that's underneath the Batman who laughs. So you don't stay with one hero the entire game. And these, the, that that's kind of an explanation of the new mechanic that they've put into this game. Um, and after playing it, we played it with uh, three players. Uh, we, all messed up at least one rule, but we, we figured it out like after a couple turns, which is pretty yeah. normal for these kinds of games. Um, and then before we decided to uh, look at who won uh, with scores and everything, we, we decided what we liked about the game, if we liked the game. And we all unanimously decided that we really enjoy this version of the game. Uh, this is not the version of the game that I would recommend to a new player. I would okay. recommend one of the other versions. Uh, this has a, a little bit of extra complexity. And uh, if you've been playing the game a lot, that complexity is great. Uh, the cool thing about the DC deck building and all its expansions is that they are all interchangeable. So you can take parts from one and put it in the other um, mm -hmm. because everything's pretty similar. So um, there's several different card types. But what you could do is you could take all the superpowers out of one set and put them into another set or you know mix and match or stuff like that. Uh, at some point in time, I want to take all the sets and dump them into one box and just like play it <laughs> on the table with like three Amazing. or four other people and just plow through everything. But uh, yeah, so uh, Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, I, I, I enjoy the heck out of this game. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. I every single time like this game comes up, I mean, um, not to like make this difficult, but I, I'm a big fan of the Marvel's legendary game. Um mm -hmm uh the great another deck builder right these two came yep. out at pretty much the same time i think yeah. um but you got me into this one i've only gotten to play it a few times and i really really liked it for exactly what you said that flow and kind of the way it is all put together it does feel like a big super ending um mm -hmm. which i like a lot um yeah Dark it's Knight's more the metal mm. yeah it's more the ascension <laughs> style of deck building for those yeah. who are into deck builders uh which i like i like the very fast paced system um, yeah. If you wanted to compare this to the Marvel one, the Marvel one is a, uh, it's the um, upper deck system yeah. of Legendary. And so that's one where typically you are co-op, you're playing together, and then you have the potential, depending on which game you're playing, that someone will become the enemy. Um, I think in the Alien one, somebody, somebody can become yeah. the enemy. Um, I don't know about the Marvel one. I remember there were some issues with the Marvel one initially, the Legendary one, where the... Um, text was hard to read but they revised that in later editions so that's definitely another great deck building game uh this one is not co-op this it's competitive there is a yeah. co-op version of the game that you can get it's an expansion i have it it's fantastic um but yeah and and you know another thing that's you know and you can kind of see it in this image here um is that they the art is the art from the comics um and it's 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 re for for someone who has just finished reading uh this this series it was really cool to see some of the characters that were important to that series that weren't super important in other uh in other games and other series at the time like uh you can see on 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 here uh, detective chimp uh detective chimp is amazing he's one of he's one of, he's always been one of my favorites in the dc uh -huh. universe and uh 
you know, and but he plays a really big part in the Dark Knight storyline. Uh, not just Dark Knight's Metal, but some of the other ones too, especially the 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 portions dealing with Wonder Woman, um, and, and and dealing with Justice League Dark. Uh, but yeah, seeing seeing obscure characters like Detective Chimp in here is it it, it brings a smile to my face. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, if it was a mainstream release, you would not see some of these characters. But yeah, it is it is a tight storyline, right? So oh yeah, super out. tight exactly yeah That's great. and uh yeah and it has it just has some really fun and unique mechanics that makes this a very different version of the game than the previous versions but you still um you, you still can follow the system because they use their own system for all these games uh like the naruto deck Nara, uh, naruto, naruto deck building game yeah there's a street <laughs> fighter deck building game uh -huh. um you know, and it's it's all the same mechanics, but they do little changes, same base kind of little changes to make the game interesting and and a lot more fun. And this this is, yeah, it, honestly, like whenever we're done here, I'm probably gonna go play it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, check in the chat. Um, did you play it with the soundtrack in the background? No, no, I I'm looking at the chat right now. It's like I'm gonna have to see if that uh soundtrack is on Spotify. DJ Regular pointed out that the uh, Dark Knight's Metal Comics did have a soundtrack, and I remember hearing that as they were coming out. Um, I'll have to check it out. Uh, that's very cool. oh man, and the vinyl comes with really cool art. Totally worth checking out. But yeah, I'm a <laughs> I'm a I'm a huge DC nerd. I mm -hmm. oh Chelsea Wolf did a song. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I love I love this game. So I guess kind of short review, not much to dig into because it's a it's an old game. It's not a it's not a groundbreaking game. It's been around for a while, sure. but it's uh oh it's so good. It's so good. So, yeah. There's not nothing I can I the but the box the box is fantastic. Everything has a place and it fits in its place. And you flip Ooh. it upside down and the pieces don't go everywhere. Yeah. Oh, so well, good. I mean I like that it is a game that has staying power. I mean, especially in the Kickstarter era, there are so many games that like, yeah. here's the game, and then it's kind of gone, um, mm -hmm. you know? So I love the idea that they are still... How long has this game been around? I mean, yeah, uh, I think it's been around a while. <laughs> yeah, I know you taught it to me, so at least, what, five, six years? Um, yeah. <laughs> so but... that's always good. All well, right. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. Wow. We, we we plowed through some of that stuff a little bit quicker. Uh, let's check into the green room. Uh, is our guest ready to hop on? Yeah, looks like a thumbs oh, okay. up. All right. Are you <laughs> right? Rich, are you ready? Well, in that case, I am ready. Yes. All right. Well, then I will catch up with you guys in just a minute. Sounds great.